Yo, what is the word? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you have been here before, I'm glad you're back. I hope everything is well with you. Hope you enjoyed the weekend. I do want to make two things clear, though, before this video starts. Number one, because it's so many movies, I'm going to cover as many as I can. I'm not going to say I'm going to get to all of them because the further down the rabbit hole I've gone, the more movies I've found. Like, you know how, like, you dig and you're hoping to hit the bottom? I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to just try to knock out as many movies as I can. And then point two, I'm not going to do like a 45 minute review for all of these movies because of the amount that I have to do. I would recommend that you watch the movie as well anyway and gather from it what you will. Take your own two cents and come back here, comment. If you've seen the movie already, you can leave that in the comment box below as well. All of that as well. Enjoy the video. Monday, last Monday, I posted the first review, which was Snatched. If you haven't seen that, go watch that. Today, we are here with a double header. Watch your back. The first iteration of this two-parter is directed by Lisa Brown. And actually, as I'm looking at the credits now, has one of the um, actors as a writer as well. A. Beasy, who you'll meet in the movie. And I'm not going to lie, this was probably the wildest fucking opening to a movie I've ever seen. So immediately, I was good. I was I was going to be here for this. Just watch this. Hey. I don't know who that nigga was. And I do not care. How I was able to cop that new bag that just came out this morning. Along with the money dog, I had pocket for his loose ass. <laughs> now, that to me far away of every movie i've seen the craziest opening i've ever seen they're they're like anime that come close if you know you know because i'm not going to tell you but they're anime that come close to that type of opening but far and away that's the wildest opening to a movie i've ever seen so we got off to a good start and the movie itself is actually not too bad for me honestly i really appreciated the story right i think one of the things that kind of affects black cinema in a negative aspect is that generally it's just a bunch of fucking crash outs in movies and there's usually no redeeming factor for the same reason why in most cases when you grow up and you go back and you look at what we deem to be hood classics they you don't love them as much because you your mindset changes you should you actually start to correctly categorize people and this is no different i think if i saw this as a, as a kid i would have felt differently but i appreciated this movie because broadly it doesn't go out of its way to make everyone a villain it makes and humanizes people on more than one scale it's not the cliche hood movie is it close for sure 100 percent there is there is drug dealing stripping you know the the regular kind of run of run of the mill b movie black characteristics that kind of similarly arise there's drug influence there is street tie influence there's all of these things that you know make the make for a quintessential hood movie i use the term in air quotes obviously but i definitely appreciated the story that they took with london and the path they went with page as well and even where they went with tone initially good great start didn't didn't end well obviously but it did what it was supposed to do it was as positive as i feel like it could have been i think a cast full of crash outs makes it very hard to appreciate a movie or to take anything positive from it at all and for them to have a london not be somebody or not be the same general negative portrayal to even have tone start out that way as well trying to be the early voice of reason trying to be the person that says hey this shouldn't do this hey guys maybe we should do this differently yo y'all need to grow up yo i don't want to be in the street forever you know that sort of thing damn son what the fuck you go learn dog think before you fucking act man damn yo watch how you talk to me nigga i ain't your motherfucking child stop acting like one then nigga i think that that helps remove that negative stigma that always comes with these same like black movie narratives I, i'm heavily appreciative of that did it in that way no not so much but to even take that initial first step i do have to give credit for regardless 
talking about characters you already know you gotta fucking talk about kanisha and shine god damn bro i like i do i get it right there obviously have to be villains in every movie i fully understand but but god god i sound like you're trying to say you're too good to fuck with me i ain't saying all that but no disrespect i'm particular about who i fuck with but he did ask me out on a date but i told him no i really didn't know how you would feel about that I mean, if you want to kick it with him, kick it with him. Don't let me stop you. I ain't never been no hater. Tom is fine. And he got money. What you won't do, the next bitch will. It sound like you want to fuck my nigga. I'm never coming that, boo. That's why I'm confused, Kanisha. Why is you even doing this if London your best friend? London don't stick to the girl code. So neither do I. So all of this is about jealousy over a nigga? Bitch. They got me. They got me. I'm gonna be honest. I just, I was, I found, I wasn't, I wasn't yelled at the TV screen, obviously. But bro, every single time Kanisha said something, it just sounded like 10 out of 10 hater behavior. There was nothing she said that would ever feel genuine, which means she was doing her part. So kudos to her, 100%. If I believe you, you acting, you're doing your job. I get it. But God damn, dog. And then Shine. Same thing applies, bro. Just just two of the most low down dirty niggas in this movie, bro. I I fucking can't, dog. Like, I get it. They're supposed to be what they are, but bro, sometimes it just feels like these people play their parts just a little too well. But my personal my personal pe pet peeve aside they did they role they they play they part they did what they were supposed to do tone's parents were cool they're just kind of you know the extras that were there uh i think that j-rock could have had a little more added to the story just in terms of where he was in terms of just like being visible because you go though you go a long time without knowing who j-rock is but I, it kind of feels like I don't know but it feels like they kind of did it so that when you have the climax and the confrontation at the very end of the movie everything's supposed to come together at once and you're supposed to feel the like weight of it but for me that portion just kind of fell flat just because I didn't know who J-Rock was I put context clues together so like if you watch the movie on your own you're gonna put it together but I think that if he's a little more present and has like a couple more scenes, his impact is felt just a little more because that that way, at least the viewer knows who he is without having to like put it together and think about it. And then lastly, ABZ was just kind of an afterthought. He may have something to do with the second movie as I'm recording this. I don't know because I didn't watch him back to back to drop one full recording. We're going to split these off, obviously. Well, not split them off. Same video, but you know what I mean. Um, but ABZ didn't really have like a large impact on the movie. He just kind of felt like a plot device, which is fine. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, man, I'm still haven't hit that point where two movies are like really, really, really bad. But we'll see what number two has to offer. Kanisha should be back. And we walked to a grave, but we don't know whose grave it is. So we'll see. I don't really know how to do or say this part because as I listened to my previous recorded, I was like really optimistic. Um, it's not trash, but boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's talk about it. So we do keep a lot of the same characters with a couple new introductions. I swear Vezo is here as Blizz. Naomi, who is supposed to be Kanisha's sister that we never knew about, is introduced as well. And they finally gave my boy some lines. How long you think before he tear the fucking city up? Felice spent a lot of the first movie, I think he had maybe two lines in there, three lines in there, where now in this movie he's talking with Never. And I'm not gonna lie, his delivery was there. It was a positive impact overall. He didn't really add much to the movie because obviously you can only work inside the parameters that are given to you. But, you know, um, it was cool to actually see him actually say something. And he had good line delivery, so I appreciate that. 
J-Rock didn't feel like a one-note side character that we knew nothing about. He was present and actually offered more to the story as well. They introduced um, a new individual named Mario. That's my business associate, Mario. Who's with I Swear Vezo or was with Blizz originally, but he doesn't really add too much to the story, so he kind of falls, you know, as like a footnote in an over in like a full told story. And the assistant or secretary, London's co-worker, Anna, finally gets a small little storyline, but nothing that's like O.D. O.D. of note. It does add something to the story. I don't, I'm not saying that it doesn't, but it's not like a full kind of arc. We see her and then her story gets kind of pieced together in spots. To the actual core of the movie, though, I'm not going to lie, this wasn't it. We did a full fucking 180 from what I initially thought was going to be like a pretty solid film on top of the fact that a lot of things just did they just didn't work well right i'll use examples obviously but like scene transitions this for example so what do you normally do shit get a roll shit take a check back to her career well i'm gonna let you know right now we're not going to no hotel motel holiday inn or back to my house the truth i am the one with the jewels oh, shit. baby listen i had to chop it so i didn't get copyrighted but to go from no one will enter my presence that easily because of the way that i carry myself or at least have that she has that air about herself from that to the drive by then immediately throwing it back seconds later it's not only was it out of character immediately it was jarring and didn't even add anything to the movie that on top of the fact that a page felt really 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 out of character where in the first movie she was someone that felt some version of remorse and did her best to not be kanisha wanted to be kind of as morally upstanding as i guess you can be in these types of situations and in the second movie she felt like she was just kind of going with the flow of everything and doing what everybody told her to do where in the first movie she had kind of more of an independent sort of vibe uh tone first off first off if i'm being really fair all these fucking one note ass fits is crazy they be having bro in like an all blue or like an all red or like all black like there is no diversity in the fits that aside um his initial want in the movie to be somebody that wanted to distance himself from the streets and not want to do the street life forever for him to then in this movie just full on kind of live out a hood nigga dream couple of baby mamas cracking who he want to crack outside all hours of the day you know the, the the cliche right for us to go from where he was in the progression it felt like he was taking the first movie to where he was by the end of the second movie just felt like a very far departure from the original character and then lastly london i'm i'm just fucking disappointed bro i don't think that london's character i, I guess you could say it wasn't i don't want to say it's not written well it just feels like we didn't follow through on the actions that were expected. London was someone that was not interested in the street shit at all. And to have characters like her, Anna, and Tone, or Anna, and Tone try to be different, oh, Paige as well, try to be different and try to distance themselves from the things that are like generally expected of them, the stereotypical become a drug dealer baby mama you know all the all the all the bad perpetuated stereotypes of black people for them to try to distance themselves from those things only to then immerse themselves in the same exact uh, habits and behaviors a movie later i'm just i'm just disappointed honestly it's not a bad movie but it's definitely lower on the list for me than the first one i i don't really have anything else to say about it I'm disappointed with how it ended, but there is gonna be a number three, so I can only hope that, I guess we'll see how that goes. 
I'm optimistic for number three. I don't go into any, I try not to go into anything like with an overtly negative mindset, but we'll just have to see what happens. I feel like the first movie was closer to being something that you could learn from and appreciate. And the second movie kind of just falls into the same stereotypical space that these types of movies do. This movie, Watch Your Back 2, is kind of the expected outcome of a 2B type of movie. Now, there is going to be a number three, so I'm obviously optimistic, but only time will tell. We'll have to see what happens. With where it is compared to what I expected, it may move down the list to the top of shit was cool, but right now, dare I say, watch your back was a great watch. It's an enjoyable movie that doesn't follow any of the initial stereotypes, and even if it does, it's not one of those movies that's kind of oblivious to its own characters, right? Kanisha is obviously, like everyone knows Kanisha's tweaking except for Sean. Everybody else is like, hey, no, 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 no. She might be a bad person. They're just not 100% sure. And that's something that I appreciated. It's also, it was also very refreshing to see somebody like Tone and London be different, go out of their way to not be so stereotypical and not written so stereotypically with that said watch your back 2 is dropping down to mid low-key trash just because i don't like the, i don't like how far of a departure it was from its original characters i might put it in trash but we'll give it space to move up if i see something that's objectively worse then we'll move it up to mid but right now we'll put it in trash because I think that the chance to do something really, really, really special and really, really, really like appreciative and important was missed. You know what? Let's 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 I'll stick it in trash. I'll stick it in trash. I'm not changing. I'm not changing. I'm not changing. I'll stand on that. I'll stick it in trash. We had a chance to do something important and we didn't do that. And a lot of the things that happened in Watch Your Back, the first movie, the first iteration were undone by the time the second movie came around um at the end of watch your back when Paige goes to her what we what we what we presume to be either tone's grave or someone's grave that never gets brought back up and it holds technically no bearing as to the second movie because the grandmother dies before the baby is born and we don't go back to the same site and Tone ends up living, and so does J-Rock. Kanisha ends up passing, but Kanisha passed well before the baby was born. So there was nothing that puts all these things together. There were just so many things that I feel like they could have done better, and we had a beautiful opportunity to do that we just didn't take advantage of. So for now, we'll put it in trash. I might move it up, but I just, I can't stand the fact that they did an entire 180. <laughs> Hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two-pack of ass. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. If you made it this far in the video, you have to know I appreciate you. I don't want another, I don't know what another movie review situation to come out. I'm gonna try to do these every day, but don't hold me to that. Give me, let me put a, I'll make you a deal. I'll do three days in a row, starting with this first video, and then you can hit the sub button. We can call it even. Leave a like too down there and also leave your comments in the comment box below. Let me know what you think and what you saw. If you've seen the movie, let me know or go watch the movie. Come back to this one and leave your comments in the comment box below as well. As always, y'all be easy. Y'all be safe. Peace.